Hello, this is Mrs. Hogan. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Simple Machine Incline Plane. Alright, so an incline plane is a flat surface sat at an angle or incline with no moving parts. Around school, you'll probably notice ramps getting into the buildings. That's a really good example of an incline plane. Another one here is the roller coaster. Alright, so what happens with these incline planes? is you've got an object, right, this is going to be your resistance, and you're moving it up the inclined plane. Notice that the distance of this inclined plane, the hypotenuse or the slope, is going to be longer than if I took this object right here and just picked it up and put it on, like say there's a platform here. So this is a shorter distance than the distance that I would be pushing it up the inclined plane. And like you learned in the last video, work is force times distance. And so this simple machine is going to help make that work easier because the amount of force that's required over a longer distance is going to be less than if I was just to pick this up and put it onto uh, the actual platform. Ideal mechanical advantage for an incline plane is found by using the same formula you used before. IMA equals distance effort over distance resistance. Distance effort is the distance traveled by the effort, which is L. All right, so that's the length of the ramp. It's the length that you're actually putting the effort towards to pull or push that resistance force. Distance resistance is the distance traveled by the resistance. We're going to call that the height, H. What work is actually being done is you're taking the resistance and you're from the ground or the bottom of the ramp and you're lifting it to the platform. Right? So the actual distance that's happening here for our resistance is it's going this height. We are putting effort along the inclined plane and that's why we have this as our distance effort. So what is the IMA for this particular inclined plane? My IMA is going to be the length or distance effort, so that's 15.0 feet. And then my height, which is my distance resistance, right here, is 4.0 feet. I say 15.0 divided by 4.0. My feet cancel out. I treat units just like X's and Y's. Feet are the same, just like an X and an X would cancel out, so do feet. So 15.0 divided by 4.0 gives me 3.75. Because of significant figures, I have two significant figures here, I have three here. So my answer can only be um, written as two significant figures, so I have 3.8. So the inclined plane is a ratio. It's 3.8 to 1. Actual mechanical advantage for an inclined plane is also found using the same formula you use for levers. That is actual mechanical advantage equals the force of your resistance divided by the force of your effort. So to solve this problem here, we've already found IMA using the distances. Now we're ready to use the forces to find my AMA. Notice my force resistance is this cart here and it's 50 point pounds. The decimal at the end tells me that that zero is significant, so I have two significant figures here. My force of my effort is going to be the effort put into moving this cart. So I have put in 20 point pounds. Again, that decimal is there to indicate that this zero is significant. So AMA equals my force resistance, 50 pounds, divided by my force effort, which was 20 pounds. You plug it into the calculator, and AMA equals 2.5. Again, I'm going to uh, refer to this as a ratio, just like I did for IMA. So it's 2.5 to 1 is my ratio for my mechanical advantage. So now I can figure out the efficiency of this inclined plane. So this is what is the efficiency of the inclined plane above. So I'm going to plug this in, my AMA divided by my IMA times 100 is going to give me my percent efficiency. So 2.50 
divided by 3.75. Remember I got this 3.75 from the slide before when I found IMA. Times 100 gives me 67 percent. So now here's an example. My new friend Michael from SLI this summer is pushing a cart up a ramp that is 5.0 meters long. What is the IMA of the ramp if the platform is 1.5 meters high? So as I showed you before, the length of this slope or ramp is going to be my distance effort. So I've put 5 meters here and my distance of my resistance is going to be the height of this ramp or basically the height, the distance that it traveled from the ground to the top of the platform which is 1.5 meters high. So I plug that into my calculator 5.0 divided by 1.5 and I get 3.3 so my IMA or ideal mechanical advantage would be 3.3. In the second part of this example we're going to find the AMA and the percent efficiency. So the ramp is inclined at 26 degrees. Michael pushes the 350 newton cart with a force of 180 newtons up the ramp. What is the efficiency of the ramp? Well, I'm going to be using this equation here, percent efficiency equals AMA divided by IMA times 100. I've already got IMA from the slide before, and I found it was approximately 3.3. Now to finish this equation, I also have to know AMA. So AMA is always force resistance over force effort. Up here in the example it says the cart is 350 newtons. So my force resistance is going to be 350 newtons. Now Michael, with his big strong muscles, is pushing this cart with a force of 180 newtons. So that means his effort force is 180 newtons. I plunge this into my calculator and I find that it's approximately 1.9. So my IMA is 3.3, my AMA is 1.9. Now remember IMA is ideal. It's the ideal mechanical advantage assuming that there is no friction, right? no outside forces. So we are expecting AMA to be lower. So now how efficient though is this system? So percent efficiency is going to be AMA, which is approximately 1.9, divided by IMA, which was approximately 3.3. I multiply that by 100, and I'm going to get 58%. So the efficiency of this ramp is 58%. Now let's take a look at what I found there in the garage, or actually it's a trailer, the ramp on the trailer to get up to the platform example of an inclined plane. Whenever you're trying to move something from the ground up to, say, a trailer like this, it's easier if you're going to lengthen that distance and going up the inclined plane instead of just lifting it this short distance to the bed of the truck or on a trailer like this. So what we're going to need here to find that ideal mechanical advantage is we're going to need to know the distance that it's going to travel, whatever it is that we're moving. We're going to need to find this distance, the length of my inclined plane. And then we need to know how far did the resistance really travel up. So we're going to look at from the ground to the top. And that's considered our distance of our resistance. Distance of my effort is how far I actually pushed it. All right, so we're going to look at the length first. I'm going to take the tape measure, put it down to about where the ground is, and see that here, to come a little bit closer, is 52 inches. And that's the length that it's going to travel. Now, the height of the inclined plane is what we're calling our distance over resistance. And the height to where I measured is about to that mark right there. And it is 19 and 3 16ths of an inch. 19 and 
16 and 3 16 of an inch. And that's what we're calling our distance of our resistance. Now I'm going to use those measurements that I just took of the ramp going up to the trailer. So I'm going to use this equation right here because I have distances and so I'm going to be able to find my IMA. Okay, so IMA equals distance effort over my distance resistance. The length of that ramp I measured to be 52 inches and the height going up to the trailer from the ground was 19 and 13 sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to simplify it a little bit more before I plug it into my calculator. Again, I know that inches are going to cancel out. And say 52 divided by 19.8125. I think it's easier to do the 13 divided by 16 to get my decimal and then plug it all in like that. Okay, so 52 divided by 19.8125 is 2.6. Or if I want to refer to this in ratio form, it would be 2.6 to 1 is my mechanical advantage. This means that it will take me 2.6 times less force to put the object on the trailer bed than if I lifted it straight up from the ground. Hopefully this helps you in understanding the mechanical advantage of an inclined plane.